Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Friends, hear the invocation. O God, our Father, renew our spirits and draw our hearts to thyself, that our work may not be to us a burden, but a delight, and give us such love to thee as may sweeten all our obedience. Help us that we may serve thee with cheerfulness and gladness of children, delighting ourselves in thee and rejoicing in all that is to honor of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is From Death to Life. As we approach the fifth Sunday in Lent, we are looking towards the cross and the empty tomb. Our theme psalm has been Psalm 32, a mascal of David. Today, we'll start in verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you about the direction you should go. I'll advise you and keep my eye on you. Don't be like some senseless horse or mule whose movement must be controlled with a bit and a bridle. Don't be anything like that. The pain of the wicked is severe, but faithful love surrounds the one who trusts the Lord. You who are righteous, rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All of you whose hearts are right, sing out in joy. God bless the reading today. Uh, I love this in instruction and, and, um, I don't spend a lot of time with mules, but (laughs) I've spent enough time with other animals and people, uh, to know that, uh, this imagery is really, is really great of don't be like some senseless horse or mule whose movement has to be controlled. And obviously that's not all animals are like that or all mules or horses are like that, but that kind of stubborn mule right? That you got to push and pull or, you know, the old expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. We, uh, we, we even delight in our stubbornness, don't we? Uh, you know, there's, there's whatever kind of European country you came from. Um, you know, all my ancestors are European. And so, you know, there's all, you know, the stubborn Swedes, the stubborn Germans, like, Every and but it's I think every culture like it's every nation you know wherever you're from I, I and we delight in our stubbornness um, we're all stubborn and, and it's not always a good thing now I think the good thing is God uses stubborn people to do really amazing things because uh, if you're if you're if you're stubborn enough <laughs> and, and you you get on the right track. Like if, if you, if you're on, if you're stubborn enough and you're on the right track, you're going to stay on the right track and you're not going to be dissuaded by anybody else. And that's where, that's where a little bit of stubbornness is good, but it can also get in our ways. And so we have to be careful, uh, 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 about being willing to take instruction about being willing to take correction. Sometimes, you know, I, I, people who have, who have just, believed something their whole life, especially when it comes to faith and and you challenge that. And and there's just, and and it's not even like, I mean, generally when it comes to pastor Wesley and I, we're not like intentionally specifically like trying to look at you and say, Oh, I'm going to challenge that one person's faith. We may say something that we believe that triggers in you a response because you have been taught or grew up or just always believe this thing, which we don't believe or that we disagree with and we can have conversation about that and everything else. But, but our, our go-to is to, to, to veer back and even, you know, to call out the other person as a heretic, as a liar, as, as false. And and we don't claim to be perfect at all. And we certainly aren't right about a great number of mysteries, which are mysteries, but do we have a willingness? Like, I mean, like I think both of us do to, to, to kind of in, in an open hand, hold our faith and our theology to be willing to be flexible and continue to learn because that's what we've devoted our lives to, to learning, to exploring and to, 
questioning and to living into the mystery and to, to growing because my faith has grown since I was a child. And my theology and my understanding of God has grown greatly since I was 20, since I was in seminary. It didn't stop there. It continues to grow, and I want it to grow until the day I die, and I want it to grow well after I am dead. Because I think there's a whole lot more to learn. And so many of us get so caught up in one thing or two things or, or, or what we were told a hundred years ago, maybe by someone we love, someone we trust, someone we looked up to, that we won't let it go. We have it with a closed fist and, and, and we're so stubborn that the water's right there, but we're not going to drink and then we're not going to live. That's most of all what we want. We want everyone to have life. And life abundant, we believe that Christ come to, came to bring you joy and to make your joy complete. And if you're not living into that, if you're not experiencing that, open your palm. Be willing to take a little instruction, <laughs> to take a little guidance so that you can have life. Our final anthology reading from this week is from A Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. After this, it was noised abroad that Mr. Valiant for Truth was taken with a summons by the same post as the other, and had this for a token that the summons was true, that his pitcher was broken at the fountain. When he understood it, he called for his friends and told them of it. Then he said, I'm going to my father's, and through with great difficulty I am got hither, yet now I do not rep repent me of all the trouble I have been at to arrive where I am. My sword I give to him that shall succeed me in my pilgrimage, and my courage and skill to him that I can get it. My marks and scars I carry with me to be a witness for me that I have fought his battle, who now will be my rewarder. When the day that he must go hence was come, many accompanied him to the riverside, and to which, as he went, he said, Death, where is thy sting? And he went down deeper, he said, Grave, where is thy victory? So he passed over, and all the trumpets sounded for him on the other side. It's flowering poetic language about our hope and our faith, isn't it? This, this willingness of the pilgrim to leave behind everything that he has and to move into the unknown to accept what is to come. I love the imagery Tolkien uses in the Lord of the Rings. It's the, uh, it, it's, it's the undying lands and, and, uh, you know, Frodo and Gandalf and the elves, they, they board on a ship through unknown waters to the undying land. They leave Middle Earth behind. They leave that world behind and go to a new world filled with new adventures. But if you're so caught up in, if you're so caught up in what you're going to lose or what you are losing, you'll never be able to freely kind of wade into those waters and get on the other side. That's why I love that, as as uh, uh, Bunyan said here, the 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 quote, "Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting?" You have that kind of assurance. Are you unafraid of death? Are you willing to greet it like a friend? 
to open the door and to welcome a new experience. I mean, for me, that's, that's what it's really about. It's, it's about, it's about another opportunity. Each day I wake up knowing that there's new opportunities and, and new possibilities and, and new ways to grow and, and to experience. And not every day is great, but, but every day brings with it newness. And wouldn't you think that on the day you die, the next day brings newness too? I do. I'll tell you when I get there. <laughs> Our final scripture reading of the week comes from Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, if you were raised with Christ, look for the things that are above when Christ is sitting at God's right side. Think about the things above and not things on earth. You died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. So put to death the parts of your life that belong to the earth, such as sexual immorality, moral corruption, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. The wrath of God is coming upon disobedient people because of these things. You used to live this way when you were alive to those things. But now set aside these things, such as anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. Still working on that. Don't lie to each other. Take off the old human nature with its practices and put on the new nature, which is renewed in knowledge by comforting to the image of the one who is created. In this image, there is neither new, uh, Jew nor Greek, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all things and in all people. Therefore, as God's choice, holy and love, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant of each other, and if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive one another. As the Lord forgave you, also forgive each other over all these things. Put on love which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called in one body and be thankful people. The word of Christ must live in you richly, teach and warn each other with all wisdom by singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do, whether in speech or action, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, give thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Uh, I love Colossians 3. It, it's, it, it's, just, it's just good advice to the church. It's good advice to you and me. Put aside anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene language. Again, I'm still working on that. Uh, don't lie to each other. That's, that's the old practice. But put on this, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, tolerance, forgiveness, love, thankfulness. Paul is telling you about life versus death. Do, do, you, do you really think if you are controlled, if you are overwhelmed with rage and anger and malice and slander and obscenity and lies, that you're living life? Do, do, do you think that people who are overwhelmed by that, and not just, not just wild, prodigal son kind of people, right? And we're talking about Christians who are filled with these things, with, with, anger, rage, malice, slander. They may not use obscene language, but they are basked in obscenity. In lies. Is that life? Is that faith? Is that a witness to good news for all people? That God loves them? 
when I'm holding hateful signs, yelling out racial slurs in the name of Christ? Not at all. But compassion, kindness, humility, humility, more humility, <laughs> gentleness. Those people who say, well, I just tell it like it is. Do you just tell it like it is or are you just a jerk? Can you be gentle in your language? I have to tell people some rough things in my position in the conference. A lot of times I have to tell people no. And I could be a jerk about it. I could just say, this is what it is. I try so hard and it tears me apart because I, I hate causing harm to people. But for the greater good, sometimes I have to. And generally for their good, just like my children. Stop eating that candy. Because if you eat an entire bag of candy, you're going to be sick. How do I know that? Because I've eaten plenty of bags of candy. It doesn't feel good to say no, but I can do it in a way that's gentle, it's kind, it's compassionate. And are you patient? I just can't stand that person. Are you tolerant with each other? Well, that person hurt me. Can you forgive them? Well, I didn't like what you said. Can you forgive me? Can you forgive yourself? Can you be patient with yourself? Can you be tolerant of yourself? Can you be kind to yourself? Can you be gentle with yourself? Maybe no one was ever gentle to you as a child. Can you be gentle to your inner child? Can you love yourself? Because you are so loved by God who is compassionate, kind, and humble, gentle and patient and tolerant and forgiving and who loves you. Friends, you are loved. Grow in love of yourself and love others so that you can live life. Christ offers life to all people. On this final day of the week, we reflect on our offerings, how we can serve and give with our time, our talents, and our treasures how we are called to be an offering in all things we do. Let us reflect in a moment how we may continue to grow in giving and adopt an attitude of gratitude. Friends, let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.